Hey everyone, today's topic is oxygen production and in this video I would like to share with you a very powerful design that I've been using for quite some time now to generate large amounts of oxygen and power for my colony. So this system is composed of several moving parts. I will do my best to explain each and every one of them so at the end we can assemble a bigger and clearer picture on, on how the entire system works. In the last section of the video, I will show you how to build the entire thing from scratch and at the end you should be able to construct the entire thing all by yourself and it should serve you for a very long time. So let's start by talking about the most important component, the electrolyzer. This is the means which we are using to produce oxygen from this entire system. Now an electrolyzer takes clean water into its input and produces oxygen and hydrogen into the air. The, the electrolyzer produces large amounts of oxygen, but it comes with two major problems. The first one is that it emits hydrogen, which is really unwelcome. And the second one is the oxygen it produces comes at 70 degrees Celsius, which is extremely hot. And if you just let this oxygen spread around your base, you will overheat the entire thing, you will kill your crops, and your base will be doomed. So we need to solve both of those problems to utilize the oxygen production of the electrolyzer. Another issue we need to overcome is how are we going to separate the oxygen from the hydrogen. Now, there is a tool that is designed exactly for this purpose, and this is the gas filter which takes an, as an input both gases and outputs exactly what we want. But we can be much more efficient here. We can harness the laws of physics in our favor and not use the gas filter and therefore conserve power. Now hydrogen is the lightest gas in the game, which means that it will always rise to the top. Oxygen is heavier than hydrogen and will always go to the bottom. This room is exactly designed to utilize this principle. As both hydrogen and oxygen are being produced by the electrolyzer, the hydrogen will go to the ceiling and the oxygen will drop to this lower room. Now, those pumps, their job is to pump the relevant gases. Since the ceiling is filled with hydrogen, this pump will only pump out hydrogen and the oxygen will be gathering around at this lower section. So this is how we create the separation. This lower section is going to be filled with oxygen and the upper part is going to be filled with hydrogen. All right, so we solved the problem of separating both gases. Let's tackle the next problem. What to do with all the excess hydrogen we are generating? Well, as it turns out, we have something called a hydrogen generator in the game. And the hydrogen generator takes hydrogen as its resource and produces power. Now, as you know, gas pumps and the electrolyzer are not power free. We need to supply them with power. And we can use this hydrogen to power up the hydrogen generator, which in turn will power up the, all the components. What we created with this is a self-sufficient circle. This means that the entire circle can provide its own power. The hydrogen produced by the electrolyzer is consumed by the generator and the generator in turn is powering up the electrolyzer and the pumps. Alright, so we found the solution to separate the gases and we found the use for the hydrogen. The last thing to do is to find a way to cool the oxygen we're producing, which is 70 degrees Celsius hot, into a much lower temperature which, which we can then distribute to our base. And for this purpose, we can use wizards. Now, wizards are animals, which you plant them, and they cool the area around them. To be more specific, they cool the gases surrounding them. Now, how does this help us? Is we can take and stuff them into a closed room filled with hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is also a very good at conducting heat to some other materials. Those Swiss watts will cool the hydrogen to a very cold temperature. And then we can use the pumps to pump the oxygen through a radiator-shaped pipes 
through the cold hydrogen, then the hydrogen will cool down the oxygen into a much more manageable temperature levels, which we can then distribute into our base. In this case, 20 degrees Celsius, which is very, very good. All right, so at this point, we have a fully operational, self-sufficient oxygen system that can produce oxygen in large quantities as long as you have water input going into the electrolyzer. But what if I told you that in addition to supplying oxygen to your system, this design can also power up and supply your base with power? How? Well, it turns out that the hydrogen generator has enough power to not only power up the electrolyzer and the pumps itself, but it also has some excess power which we can use to power up our base. And the next challenge is how are we going to harness this excess power and use it? Okay, so let's figure out the logic we need to use to accomplish our goal of supplying power both to our oxygen generating circuit and our base. So the first one who gets the power must be the oxygen generation circuit. Because if, if our electrolyzer runs out of power, it will not be able to produce hydrogen. And without hydrogen, the hydrogen generator will cease to function and everything will just shut down. Only uh, when there is enough power stored for our oxygen circuit, we can use, safely use, the remaining power for powering, for powering up our base. So let's jump in into the power connections and see what we have. So this is the main generator line, and it branches off into two circuits. The first circuit, the lower one, which is flashing, is the circuit that powers up our oxygen production circuit. Those are the three pumps and the electrolyzer. The second circuit, the second branch off, is the one that redirects excess power into our base. So let's talk about how we are actually going to implement this priority control. Now notice that each of those branches has a power shutoff associated with them, and at any given time, only one line is active. This means that the generator can either supply power, or let's be more precise, it can either charge up the battery that's supplying power to the oxygen circuit, or it can supply power to the battery which powers up our base. So we know that the battery that gets the priority is the right one, which controls the oxygen production circuit. And to accomplish the priority, we implement some basic automation. From this entire automation circuit, the only one which controls battery priority is this one, which is essentially a single logic gate and not gate. Now, how does this work? Well, in this case, we see that the battery has sufficient charge, therefore it turned itself off. Now, what it did is disconnecting itself from the power line to the generator. It does not receive power. Instead, it enabled the other power line into the generator. So the generator now feeds the other battery with excess power, which goes into our base. Now let's see what happens if the battery governing our oxygen circuit does not have enough charge. In this case, it gets activated. And by activating, it re-enables back the feeding line from the generator and disconnects the other, the other line that feeds the other battery, which goes into our base. Now, the last bit of automation is this other logic gate. This is an OR gate. An OR gate outputs a green signal if at least one of its inputs is also a green signal. In this case, what it does is that it checks the charge level of both batteries. If both of those batteries are fully charged, then this generator will get a red signal because both of those batteries will output red signal. In this case, the generator will stop functioning and it will not produce power that will go to waste. 
So the last thing to mention before we move on is one important detail. The hydrogen generator must not remain disabled for long periods of time. The reason is, is that if the hydrogen generator is disabled, hydrogen is not consumed. And instead, the hydrogen will start building up above the electrolyzer. At a certain point, there will be enough hydrogen built up that will, it, that will clog the electrolyzer and will stop it from working and producing oxygen. To avoid this problem, all you have to do really is make sure that you have something that consumes power on the end that supplies the excess power into your base. And you should be fine just to give the circle something to power up which shouldn't be a problem. All right, so the last thing to talk about are the pumps and the automation. So I guess by now you notice that I have two pumps for oxygen, but only one for hydrogen. And that's the reason for this. If we go into the electrolyzer and click it, we can see the specs of how much it outputs. It outputs oxygen at the amount of 888 grams per second and hydrogen at 112 grams per second. Now, a single pump can pump 500 grams per sec of gas. You can see right here. This means that to pump all the oxygen out, we will need at least two pumps. However, only one pump is enough to pump the hydrogen, which is much, much lesser than the oxygen amount generated by the electrolyzer. And finally, we want to govern the control of the pumps using Atmos sensor. An Atmos sensor is an automation piece that sends green or red signals depending on the gas pressure surrounding it. In this case, we want some gas to build up at both of these chambers. That would be hydrogen and oxygen. We don't want to deplete the entire chamber out of gas to prevent from hydrogen, for example, to fall down to the lower chamber if all the oxygen will be pumped out and vice versa, to oxygen to rise up into the upper chamber if we pump out all the hydrogen. Therefore, all I, all I did was setting an atmos sensor some threshold. Both of them are set to 600 grams above which simply means that they will only activate the pumps if there are more than 600 grams of pressure of gas around them. All right, so the last thing to talk about is how to connect the excess power you get from this circuit into your base. Now, connecting the circuit entirely by itself into some consumer is not a good idea since the generator is not providing continuous power into the base. Remember, it has the priority of supplying the oxygen generating circuit first. Instead, the circuit can be a great support circuit for your main power grid. Let's take, for example, one of my circuits in this base. Let's say this one, the one that is flashing right now on the screen. I've plugged this circuit into my main power grid over here, which goes to a smart battery on the lower side of the transformer, a transformer, and directly into the main power grid, which is composed of some coal generators. In addition, I've connected our oxygen production system right from this transformer to the same circuit via this junction. Now notice what's gonna happen. This secondary battery, at the other side of the transformer of the main power grid plays an important role because it has a direct connection into the excess power output by the oxygen production circuit. As long as this circuit produces external power, it will charge up this battery. And if this battery is sufficiently charged, it will never plug itself into the main power grid. And therefore it, it will utilize the power from the hydrogen generator. This is, is a supportive role of the hydrogen generator and the oxygen circuit. If it will not produce power, this battery will deplete and it will just go and connect itself back to the main power grid because well, it has no choice. So this is how you plug it 
into your system. Now the design for those generators and this, uh, those power systems, if it seems like uh, Chinese for you, uh, it's, it is shown in one of my videos about power grid systems, so you can find a proper explanation how to build this, but together they interact just flawlessly. So that's pretty much covers all the ingredients of this design. The remaining thing to do now is to explain how to build the entire thing from scratch. And this is exactly what we're going to do right now. So just like in real life, before you build anything, you might want to take measurements. So this design is going to take up 12 tiles on 12 tiles, meaning it's going to be 12 tiles high and 12 tiles wide. So we start the design by building the outer walls, which are going to be made out of insulated tiles made of igneous rock. The reason is, is that the system is going to be fairly hot, and we don't want this heat to be spread across our base. For the material used, I decided to use igneous rock, since it is a great insulator in general, and it is commonly available in the early game. Alright, so now we will plug all the components of the system, disregarding their connections, into the design. Let's start with the electrolyzer. We put it over here. Then we take our pumps, one for the hydrogen, two for the oxygen, in this manner. Next, we plug our wizards. Now, wizards go to those four farm tiles. To get a wizard, you need to dig into an ice biome and dig them up. Once you have them, you plant them. Oh, one, two, three. There we go. Next, we put, we're gonna put some sensors. So we have the Atmo sensors over here, and we also have our power shutoffs right there. Next, we're gonna plug some small batteries, one over here and the other one over there, a transformer. The logic gates required, we have a node gate. Make sure you plug him in this way. The OR gate like this and of course last but not least the hydrogen generator okay so those are all the compo components now plugged the only thing remaining to do now is to connect everything so before we go for the connections another thing i forgot to mention is this little gas vent i placed over here we are going to use this gas vent to fill this entire chamber where the wizards are with hydrogen so let's start by plugging our automation wires. We go into our automation interface and we plug it like this. You draw an automation wire like that and then from the output of the NOT gate to the shutoff, the output of the OR gate goes into the generator and for the input of the OS is you connect one input to one battery and the one, the other one to the other. For the Atmos sensors, we want them to control our pumps, so we plug them into our pumps, like this. So with automation done, let's move on to the next part, power. So for power, we are going to use conductive wires. This is important. Normal wires will not do. The generator will overload these wires, so conductive wires are a must for this build. So we start off by plugging a wire into our generator, and over to our shutoffs. Now we will create a branch. One wire will go over to the battery and from this battery into our oxygen circuit. We will plug all of those components together. So this is the oxygen circuit done. The next one is we're going to plug it into our external excess power circuit. So we will plug it over the other shutoff, and now we will create a nice bridge. And all the way into the battery, and from the battery into the transformer, and from the transformer somewhere else into our circuit. So this is the power connection. So we have power and automation done. The next thing we want to do is to connect some piping and some other stuff. 
Uh, before before that, I just want to mention that you probably noticed that some of those walls are currently open and there are no doors. The reason is that during construction, it is best to leave the spaces open so duplicants have easy access to all the building area. And once they're done building, you can simply close them off. Okay, so back to our topic. We continue with temp shift plates. Now, temp shift plates help spreading temperature across a room. And we're going to place them in the room with the wizards and hydrogen. The material used to build them is granite because it is very good at conducting heat. So what we're going to do is simply fill the room with granite. Now, granite is also very uh, easy accessible at the early game, so it shouldn't be a problem to get that. So next one is piping. So first of all, let's start with the hydrogen. Let's take a gas bridge and put it right over here. Next, we take a pipe, form the hydrogen pump, and all the way into the vent. On the other input of the bridge, I will connect the hydrogen, hydrogen generator. Now, why is that? First of all, remember that we want to fill this room with hydrogen. And this electrolyzer, fortunately, generates this hydrogen. So what's going to happen is once we close this room, of course, and the electrolyzer will start working, the gas pump will pump hydrogen first across the bridge. And once this area is filled with hydrogen, the vent will accept no more. And the rest of the hydrogen will pump into the hydrogen generator. Next one up is oxygen. So for the oxygen, we're going to start off with a gas bridge, plug it right over here. And as you can see, the input of the bridges should be next to the pumps. We're going to take a normal gas pipe and plug it, both of those pipes, into the gas bridge. Now the output of the gas bridge is going to be into the wastewater room. And this is where the gas is going to be cooled. So we are going to use radiant pipes made out of copper, which is perfectly fine, in order to encourage a heat transfer from the hydrogen inside this room and the oxygen inside the pipes. This will accelerate the cooling process of the oxygen. And we were going to draw it into a snake-like shape, just like this, all the way outside. Once your crossed, once your pipe is crossed out the wall, you can keep you can go back and use normal gas pipes. It's absolutely fine. By this point the gas is now cooled. So this is about the oxygen. Okay, so we are almost done. The only thing remaining to do is to start closing off some sections and to prime the system, get the gases going, and then we're good to go. So let's start closing parts where we can. The first one we can close is this uh, intermediate section between the hydrogen generator and the pumps. We can wall it off. Remember to use igneous rock and insulated tiles. Next one are doors. And that's it for now. Oh, and also this little section. Okay. So the next thing to do is that we need to get rid of all the oxygen in the lower chamber, more specifically in the wizard chamber, to make room for hydrogen. So for this, I recommend building two tiles of metal just above the vent and keeping this open area open for now. So as the gas is being sucked, it will have a tile that he can pass it through. Now, there's a nice trick you can do with the pumps in order to control them manually. If you click on the Atmos sensor, you can set up some really high value right here. And by the buttons of above and below, you can control their operation. For example, since they've set such a huge number and it's above this number, they will not work. But if I click below, they will start pumping. So this is nice. The next thing to do is we need to provide them some external power to work since they don't have power. So for this reason, we are going to temporarily connect them to our main power grid. Uh, let's say this is my main power grid. And let them work. Make sure you close the door, of course, so ox oxygen will not seep in. And I connected the output put off the oxygen pipe into a temporary gas vent, so just so we can get rid of the oxygen. 
So pumps are sucking all the oxygen out, and eventually you're gonna uh, get to a, a very small amount of oxygen. There's no need to go all the way to zero, don't bother. Just if you get something like this, 68.8 gram of oxygen, it's perfectly viable, and you can now stop. You can turn off the pumps by playing with the Atmos sensor, and then we're going to continue into the next thing. Alright, so the room is almost entirely depleted of oxygen. What you want to do is to try to keep it that way. Now, there is only one less space that we need to build a tile in order to block this entire room. So, we take a, off a metal tile and give a duplicant order to come and build it. Now, the moment the duplicant will enter the door, some oxygen will seep in, but this is not a problem. Even if some oxygen will be here, it's absolutely fine. It won't impact the performance of the system. And you will order him to build it right over here. The wizard chamber is now fully enclosed and separated from everything else. Now, the reason I went for metal, metal tiles is that I want to take some of the cold inside this room and spread it around this chamber. Since it's going to be fairly hot in here, the extra cold from the wizard is going to help cool stuff a bit and it will keep the system stable. So this is why I chose metal tiles. I made them out of copper. It's perfectly viable to make them either of copper or iron. It doesn't really matter. This is the thing. This is them. Copper it was just uh, easy to access in the early game, so I used it. And that's pretty much it. The only thing to do now is to pump some water, set off the Atmos sensors and our batteries, and that's it. So let's start with Atmos sensors. We're going to set them both to 600 grams. Okay, and they're going to be activated only if there are more than 600 grams above them. So both are on above. Atmos sensors set, check. Next we'll go for the batteries. For the batteries, we will set high threshold for 100%. And low threshold, I like to set it to 50, just to be sure. You can even set it to 60, just to make sure that there will always be enough charge for the oxygen production system. And 5% for our external output battery. So the system is now primed and ready. All we need to do is to plug some water into the electrolyzer. Now remember, once water goes in and hydrogen comes out, the hydrogen will first go and fill up the chamber with a waste water before going into the hydrogen generator. So until the hydrogen generator gets to work, Make sure you supply the system with external power, either from your main power grid or for some temporary manual generator and some wire going into your smart battery which feeds the pumps and the electrolyzer. So let's plug. Let's plug us some water. Moment of truth. Okay, here comes the water. Now we're going to see how the gas is built up. So electrolyzer starts kicking and produces some gases. So we have some oxygen here, and some of it will go into this chamber, but that's not a problem. And you can see the hydrogen has already built up on the ceiling. And now the entire ceiling and the pump are filled with hydrogen, which is exactly what we wanted. And it will keep it that way because the Atmos sensor will never let the pump suck all the hydrogen out. On the other hand, we have oxygen at the lower chamber. So this is it our gas separation. So oxygen is pumped out, hydrogen pumped in, and eventually this chamber will be, will be filled. When that happens, the gas vent will stop accepting more gas and the hydrogen generator will start working. Okay, so fast forward a bit, and the chamber with the waste wards is now completely full with hydrogen. You can see the gas vent can no longer accept any more gas and hydrogen will no longer pass across the bridge. Next batch of hydrogen will now go, well, into our generator, and the generator will start working. Once this happens, we can safely plug all the external sources from the system and let it run by itself. So here comes the hydrogen, and the hydrogen generator kicks in. This is the point where I disconnect all the external help in terms of power the system required. 
because now it can sustain itself. And we are done. We have a fully operational, self-sufficient oxygen production module that provides large amounts of oxygen and power to our colony completely by itself. This design will serve you faithfully from the moment you've built it until the end of time. For how much long that is, is up to you. But this one got your oxygen production needs covered. This I can guarantee. So this was quite the process we undertook. And I hope everything is a bit more clearer now than it was in the beginning. And if you still have some questions, feedback or suggestions, feel free to post them in the comments below. And other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.